What's going on? Jun with the Sushi Man, and in this video, I'll teach you how to make Unagi Nigiri Sushi, or Freshwater Eel Sushi. It's one of the most popular types of sushi, at least here in the States, and you might be surprised at how easily you can make it at home. And I'll also share with you the simple, game-changing step that will elevate your Unagi experience immensely, so be sure to keep watching. Alright, without further ado, let's jump right in. Alright, first let's go over the ingredients. As always, the most important ingredient in sushi, the rice. And you can watch my how to make sushi rice video to learn how to prepare this properly. Now, I'll only be using about one cup, not even for this video. But as I mentioned in my other tutorials, it's hard to get the correct consistency if you cook such a small amount. So I recommend cooking more and either save it or make more sushi out of it. Okay, next we have the unagi. And we'll be using this pre-cooked one that comes frozen and in a package like this. I usually recommend one that's around 10 to 12 ounces, but see what you can find. Most Asian markets will carry them in the frozen seafood section. And we'll only be using about half of this. Next is a shiro nori, or dried seaweed. And we only need one half sheet. Then for the toppings, we have of course our unagi sauce, which is a very important ingredient. You can use store-bought ones, but I highly recommend making your own by following my unagi sauce video with the link right over here. We also have some toasted sesame seeds and then some wasabi, ginger, and soy sauce, which are all optional, of course. And that's it. Now let's get into our prep. Okay, first thing we're going to do is get our nori ready. And all we're doing with this is cutting it down to small strips, which we call obi in Japanese. Obi translates to belt, and just like how a belt holds our clothes in place, an obi is used to secure toppings that are difficult to keep on top of nigiri sushi. Okay, so make sure your hands are fully dry, and then take the nori and fold it in half. Now we're going to fold this in half again. And as long as the nori is fresh and dry, it should tear clean and straight just like this. Now we're going to cut this into thirds with our knife. And you want to make sure the knife and cutting board are fully dry. And that's it. And you can easily do this with a pair of scissors as well. Just try to keep them straight and about half inch wide. All right, next, let's prepare the unagi. So first, let's cut open the package. Now, all of these pre-packaged ones will come sauced already. And that might sound great, but it's actually not. Most of these sauces have preservatives and artificial coloring, which we don't really want. Plus, our own unagi sauce will taste much better. So we're going to wipe all of this off with some paper towels. Okay, now we're going to cut this down into our nigiri pieces. So first, we'll cut this right down the middle lengthwise along the center line here. Now, I'm only going to use one half of this, so I'll wrap this other one with plastic wrap and leave it in the fridge. Best to use it sooner than later, of course, but it'll last a couple days, as long as it's wrapped tightly and properly stored in the fridge. Alright, so to cut this down into nigiri size, we're going to lay the unagi on our cutting board with the skin side down. Now, typically we cut a lot of fish from the tail end, but with unagi, it doesn't make that much of a difference, and you can cut either way. The more important thing here is to get the correct size and thickness. So I like to place it at an angle like this, which makes it a little easier to cut. Now we lay our knife down about 45 degrees, and we're also going to cut the unagi diagonally by opening the angle of the blade. And then we just slice right through. And this bottom part with the skin might be a bit tough, so you may have to put a little extra force. And we want each piece to be roughly about three and a half inches long and about an inch and a quarter to inch and a half wide. Okay, watch. And there you go. Now, I'm only going to be making five of these, but you can obviously keep going and cut more if you like. Alright, now we're going to heat these up by broiling them. And this step is absolutely crucial. The number one reason why people don't like unagi or have a bad experience with it is because it wasn't prepared properly. Some restaurants will serve unagi just straight out of the package, no heating, sauce as is, just cut, put it on rice, and there you go. 
And unfortunately, that's why unagi gets a bad rep a lot of times. So unless you want cold, chewy, and rubbery unagi, do not skip this step. And there's different ways to do this. You can bake it, grill it, torch it, but I find that broiling it is the easiest, most foolproof way with great results. Okay, so let's place these onto our foil line pan with the skin side up. And I like to use non-stick foil, but if you're using regular foil, then it might help to spray or spread on a light sheet of oil before placing these on here. And now we're gonna broil this on high for about six to seven minutes. And I have the rack at the bottom setting on my toaster oven, which is about six inches away from the heat, and that's ideal. Okay, now while we wait for the unagi, let's make sure we have everything ready to make our nigiris. That way the unagi will still be warm. Kind of defeats the purpose if it gets too cold again. So we have our sushi rice, bowl of cold water or tezu, the obi or nori strips, our cutting board, and a clean towel. All right, now these are nice and heated up. So we're gonna transfer them onto our plate. And now we're ready to start making our nigiris. Now this is a little different than how we make regular nigiri. It's actually a bit easier, so don't worry. If you wanna check out that video though, that's the link in the corner. So with unagi nigiri, we're gonna make all the sharidama or rice balls first, and then add the unagi on top afterwards. Okay, so first let's wet both hands. Just enough where it's shiny like this, not drenched. And then grab a small bowl of rice with one hand, about the size of a ping pong ball. Now place it onto your other hand like this. And then what we're gonna do is gently squeeze our palm while applying pressure from the top with your thumb. And at the same time, either using one or two fingers, you want to gently but firmly apply pressure from the side. Okay, one or two fingers, either one. So basically we're applying pressure from all sides. Well, almost all sides. This bottom part hasn't been pressed yet. So that's why we now rotate this 180 degrees and then we again apply pressure with the thumb. And then do the same thing, just like that. Rotate it, press. Rotate it, press. Okay, and you also wanna rotate it sideways so you get the opposite side. And then again, do the same thing. And then that's it. Now be careful not to compress it too tight though. You don't want to squeeze it where the rice gets smashed. Okay, now that's one way to do it. Let me show you another way that you might find a bit easier and faster. So same thing, wet your hands and grab a ball of rice. And this time, instead of using your finger to press from the side, just gently compress your palm while you use your thumb and finger to apply pressure from the top and bottom simultaneously, just like that. And then you want to rotate the rice around this way and then apply even pressure from all sides again. Rotate, squeeze, rotate, squeeze and repeat this a few times with light pressure until you get a nice and even log shaped piece, like this. Not the traditional method, but technically it's doing the same thing and not to mention it's much faster. So it comes in handy when you're making a ton of these. All right, now from here, we're gonna take one piece of unagi and we're going to place it on top of the rice. Then take one strip of nori and with the rough side facing in, we place it right in the middle. Now we're gonna wrap the nori around by pinching the sides. So hold the sides and put it upside down. And then we just wrap the nori on top of itself and make sure it's nice and tight, just like a bandage. And that's it. Now let's finish the rest of these. And you also wanna make sure that you're placing the unagi the same way. That way it'll look nicer when you plate it. All right, now we're ready to plate these. Okay, now we'll drizzle some unagi sauce on top. And grind some sesame seeds on it as well. Add some wasabi and ginger on the side. And there you have it. Now that's how unagi nigiri is supposed to look. It's tender, rich, smoky, sweet, 
umami packed, and you get just a bit of crispiness from those charred edges. And it's so well balanced with the vinegar sushi rice. Trust me, I've converted many people from unagi haters to absolute unagi lovers. And you will too when you follow this recipe. And if you guys enjoyed this video and want more recipes like this, be sure to check out my book. It's called How to Make Sushi at Home, a fundamental guide for beginners and beyond. It's full of recipes, tips, tricks, and step-by-step -step instructions on everything sushi, from sourcing the right ingredients all the way to pairing sushi with your favorite drinks. So whether you're a sushi chef in training or a DIYer that wants to make sushi at home, this book is your guide. Links are in the description for those that are interested. All right, good job guys. And now that you know how to make unagi nigiri sushi, go to this video right over here to learn how to make one of my all-time favorite meals, unadon. Plus that way you can utilize the same unagi for different meals. Sounds like a win-win to me. All right, thanks for watching. And as always, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you found this video helpful. I'll see you on the next one. Arigatou gozaimasu.